so let's finish off the masts from part 34. So the first thing we'll do is we'll install the tops. So we'll start with the fore mast. And we just need to be mindful of the position, so I'm setting this as the, the front. And I'm going to use epoxy resin like it. So we just need to spin it around so the f the it's offset, so this is actually the front. I'll just push down, make sure it's fully home in the, the shoulder. I'll just keep an eye in alignment, and that looks pretty good there. And we'll do the same for the, the main mast. So again, we know because of this pivot here for the boom, that this is the front. So on this one, we've got the the extra rigging there, and that goes to the front. So again, we'll just keep an eye on the alignment and just press it home. Again, I'm just trying to keep the alignment set. Okay. So while we're at it, we'll add the uh, steps for the mast, for the upper mast. So we've got two of these, a lower one. Just align it. And then we've got an upper one as well. So what we'll do is we'll just use the mast, the upper mast to align the I'm just gonna have to hold it till it goes off a bit. If I can maybe just secure the bottom. So I'll just do the same main mast. Let's have a look at the, the weather vane and light at the very top of the upper mast. So we have this. Then we've got like a, a wind vane. So, and then that can sit in line, okay. Okay, so do the upper bits now. Okay, so put this ring on. This is very hard to show, it's very small. So on that ring, I don't know if you can see, but there's two eyes and a slot. So the slot goes to the front, because that's where that bar we just Sold it up, goes on to. So we've now got this disc here, which goes on, and then we've got the light as well. Good. See if I can get some solder right into there. So on the top of the mast, there's actually a hole because there's a little pin on the bottom of the of the light. I'll see if I can just hold this on to the top. Okay, so that's soldered on. So the last thing to do, this will probably be the trickiest bit. So we'll just put some solder in that slot, just down the face of there. Finally managed to get it on. 
Sorry, I didn't get you. You just, I had to get right in close. It took several attempts, but it's on now. So here's the top of the main mast. It was a lot simpler. Luckily though, part to supply this part here is a spare, because it needs to it needs to be bent up and it pinged off and I lost it. On the foremast, I had to redo the, the vane. And again, luckily, point to supply a spare. I'd actually reached over and bent it by mistake. And then when I was, came to straighten it, it snapped. So I read it, but it's just glued on the CA glue. We'll work on the tops next, and we'll do the handrails. So again, hopefully you can see the edge bend marks. So the two longest sections are the ones we need to bend for the ends. Let me just put it in a piece of foam as usual. And then we we'll use a round mandrel just to put some carb into it. So this side's not too bad. Still a bit more to go in there. We can try it up though. See how it goes. Okay, so this edge here needs to, to go a bit more. I'm going to use a smaller diameter just to tighten the the curves. Okay, so I can I need to just open up a wee bit. It's a bit too tight. But I'm in a good position to fix them here. Now, as you can see, each of the stanchions are a certain diameter. But at the end here, we can't, if we put them together, we're gonna to have a double width stanchion. So looking at the plans, they've actually fixed them being overlapped. And that's what I'm gonna do as well. So that's them but edged. So you can see it's a, it's a wee bit too thick. But we'll put them together like that, so there's a bit of an overlap. But that's all the instructions show. Okay, so we'll solder this up. That'll be nice and strong, and then we can come in and just work on the, the curves to get them right. Okay, so we'll solder these up. You can see they've been overlapped. Okay, I'll just clean up the top surface. Okay, so as you can see, this side, it's a really nice bend. This one's a bit misshapen. So, this uh, knife handle, it's a wee bit smaller than that actual diameter, but we can use it to Clean up that bend a bit. There's a wee bit of a kink I put in using this small mandrel. So this should get rid of that. Checking pretty good there. So slightly undersized, tack this front edge first. Okay, probably didn't see that. Okay, so it's a wee bit out of shape, but once it's all painted up, I think we'll be fine. Okay, I'll do the other one. Okay, so we've got small ladders to put on next. I don't know if you can see, there's actually an edge mark there for a fold. Okay, so we squeeze this tight. Let's do a trial fit. The bend slightly, because I think there is a bit of an angle. A CHL.
So it looks to be almost vertical. I'm sure the pond's here, it's on an angle, but it's not quite long enough to be on an angle. But we'll leave that there anyway. I'll do the other one and then we can come back. Okay, so the main mass one is probably closer to the shushions where it's got a bit of an angle, it's kicked out at the bottom. So we'll attach the upper mast. So I'm just going to put some epoxy into the lower hole. And we'll just have a look and square it up. Just apply some CA thin to the joint. Okay, I'll let that go off now. So let's move on to the additional rigging. So it works from the tops up the masts. So we've got multiple parts like this. The first thing we need to do is form the tan buckle. So we'll fold them over. Now I'm just going to solder these. I'm going to be very careful that we don't bend or buckle these fine lines. Star at the top. So I've just bent them over partially and we'll just uh, probably don't need to solder these bits. We will do just to keep them flat. So hopefully you can see, I mean, it's absolutely tiny. We need just the tiniest touch of solder. And it's really just to open, uh, stop them opening up any. Or just close them over. Kind of mess that one up. You have to take a bit more care and fold them. I don't want a wee bit off, but you're not going to notice. <laughs> so the next thing is we'll attach them to the, to the tops. Now you just have to be mindful on the arms that came out. The plate it came up through is slightly offset, so it's not long in the center. So make sure we put it onto the correct side. So I'm just going to put a tiniest bit of solder. Okay, so I'll just hold it like that. So I need to get the soldering iron. I should hold that first. Okay, so that's that one. So now we just need to cure the rigging. So the lower one goes to this ring here, and then the upper one goes just under that ring. Oops, I've broken one off for you. It's very delicate again. So I can go to there. I'll do the bottom one first. And I'm just going to use a super glue gel for that. Now I'll have to fix that, which I'll just use super glue gel as well. Okay, so we'll do the lower one. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to keep coming back and reattaching bits. Yep, because that bottom one's already broke off. So I come to do this one. It's going to knock the top one off again. Let's try the trusty old micro crystal clear. Right, that's a back one. I don't know how much you can see. But what I'll do is I'll let this go off a wee bit and then I'll come in with super glue thin and just touch them. And hopefully that's enough to, to bind it. 
It's not going to take much to take knock these off. But I'll go through the rest of them on both masts and then we can come back. Okay, I'll just fix this while I'm here. Okay, so change of plan. Trying to do one rigging line at a time was getting very frustrating and it was a build up of glue on both areas. Be gluing and re-gluing again and again. So I've cleaned them up with acetone to release all the bonds and I soldered all the connections to the starfish here and then I'll go back in and do it. And the same for the foremast, all the bottom soldiers were done. And I've just got these to sort out. Another thing I found was rather than trying to glue against the springy brass, we can bend and adjust this connector here to get them to line up more or less in the correct position. And that should make it easier for gluing instead of fighting against the, the spring of the brass, okay? So I'll go and tweak all these so they're all in the right position. Okay, so that's more secured at the top. Some of them's not very pretty, but they're done now. So moving on, we'll look at the gaff. So there's a larger one that fits into that hole we drilled earlier. So we've got some work to do on them, so we'll do that now. So we've got the support and we've got a, another ring to put on to the, the gaff itself. So. And then the support, which is fold in half. Now you're going to get one of these, so you don't want to lose it. Okay, so there's a hole in the bottom of the gap. It's supposed to slip onto there. Which it does nicely, no clean up or anything. So there's a little tab on the end there and it will fit into the, the hole in the mast. Okay, the hole's more than big enough. I was a bit worried that I drilled it too small, but it's more than big enough. So I'm just going to use super glue gel because the hole is quite big. I might just load it up. I'll just put some kicker on it as well. Okay, so. Okay. So the, so the upper one's a lot smaller. And it has this plate or spreader. It goes on. And of course, we want it to be square. It's not square. So we can re remelt it. That's not too bad there. So that fits onto a ring. So as you can see, there's the, the ring with a little spigot on it. So we need to bend that up to angle, but it's just a bit too wide. So if we're very careful, we should be able to just sand file just a wee bit thinner. Okay, so you can see that fits on perfectly. We just need to bend it up to the angle now, so to match the, the larger one at the bottom. So hopefully we don't disturb anything. It's going to bend it up just a fraction more. Okay, 
Oh, that's looking quite good. Huh? So that matches a couple of bits to do next. But before we do, let's have a look at the, the boat boom. It sits here. So the boat boom's really nicely machined. And we've got the other end here. It's really wonderful, actually. A lot of effort and steps on, in these. So that would fit on the end there. So obviously this slot there and there need to line up. There's a number of rings and pulleys and rigging to go on, which I'm not going to do at the moment, but we'll discuss that shortly. So as you can see, there's a slot and I can put away it. Now, even before I destroyed this pivot point, I just can't imagine how this would go on without forcing it. Because there is a hole and then another hole at the top, which would be for the ball. But I mean, if I was to push that on, I'm pretty sure I'm going to damage something. I might just have to enlarge that hole based on the diameter of the ball here and maybe open up this slot. So it's a slide in fit. So I'll do that now. So I'm not going to fit this now until well down the track because Jim pointed out that the position of the boom with the rigging interferes with the ship's boats that's sitting on the deck. So I'll get the boats done and then I can come in and see how I adjust the rigging here because the, the rigging's photo wedge, but I might be able to cut it and shorten it and solder it again. But I'll fit this now so I don't have to do it once it's painted and then We'll look at this further along the build. So I'm just going to measure the diameter of that ball. It's about one and a half mil. According to this, it's about 1.7, 1.8. So it must be the, the slot here isn't wide enough. So I'll see how I can get in there to open that up. Okay, so if I use a ruler with some paper on it, I can get that in there. It's just a case of trial and error. Not trial and error, it's just a case of trialing it up. A, a bit at a time so we don't overdo it. Okay, so I have to be careful. It is on. There we go. Okay, so that gets held on the end here. It's a nice block, and then, like I say, there's pulleys and that fit inside that slot, and that will lift it up. But that's not now fitted, so we can put this aside, assuming I can get it off. Here we go. So the last thing to do now is put in the ladders that run up the sides. Okay, so here's one of the ladders that run up the side of the masts. You can see they've got like drops on them, but we can also see the uh, fold edge marks. So this took a bit of head scratching. Initially, I, I tried one. I was thinking you had to bend up each leg one at a time, like you do with uh, the, la the, the deck ladders. But you actually bend them is a, a rule. It takes a bit of finessing to get them into the bender. You have to grip it really tight because you don't want it moving. And then we bend them. Is a rule. The instructions aren't very clear just how much and whatnot. So I'm kind of playing this by ear. But hopefully you can see at least on one side how they come out and then drop down. Just being careful, just do a wee bit of time. So 
I'm going to try and minimise this torsion so it fits against the, the mast nice for glue. So, okay, so it looks like I can do this side a bit more. I'm not sure, maybe you're supposed to do it 90 degrees. But Okay, so the lesson there is make sure you do it right the first time so you don't have to try and really re bend it. Right, I think I'll leave it at that. Okay, change our method again. So, if you've actually got a full wedge bender, and that's the way to go. I don't, so I'll have to do it old school. If we press that down, you Now, I'm not going to go to 90. I'm just going to keep back a wee bit. I thought that's pretty close to 90, but... Okay, much better way. Hopefully you can see the, the steps out. Okay, so that's a way to go for that. Okay, so let's get these glued on. So I think I'll do the top first. So we just use some Z thin. We better kick her as well. You can see the glue moving through capillary action along the length, which is good. So that's one side. Okay, so, so the, there's one at each side, so I'll just keep doing that. The upper ones, the main mast has got shorter ones than the four mast, so it should be quite obvious though once you come to do them. Okay, so that's the mast ladders on for both of them. And turned on not too bad. Of course, we'll see what they look like once there's some primer on them, but uh, at the moment that's kind of good. The last thing to put on is this ridiculously long, thin ladder. Now at the top, there is a couple of edge marks, I just can't see them. Must be this eye, this side, yep. So we'll just bend them. So. As far as I'm aware, I'm going to do this without damaging anything. So it sits on there. It goes up to this very top of the mast. Actually, it shows it on an angle. It shows it being in that position there, I'm connecting up to the top. I might connect the top first. And then for the bottom, I might just glue it where it is. It's nice at the top there. 
Should be probably just a line at the middle there, but see if I can just glue it to the edge of this platform. The instructions don't show that for the main mast, so because we've still got a spotlight to go in here or a searchlight. I'll have a look at the uh, photos of the finished pointers just to see if it shows it. If not, then I'll leave it. If not, I'll just do it off camera anyway. Okay, so we're not ready for grime and paint. Okay, so that's the mask finished as far as I want to take him for this video. So on the whole, they've came out not too bad. A couple of points that I'll show in a second. I actually lost the weather vane at the very top here. When I was spraying it, I had it upside down and touched the bench. And then of course the airbrush blew the part away. So I'll try and find that. It'll be on the desk somewhere and then I can reattach it. The rigging themselves are just great at the moment. I'll paint them shortly and I'll explain why I'll do that later. I've still the lights to paint. There's one there and one in the floor mast as well. Okay, so we'll trial them up to the to the hull, but I'm not going to fix them. Okay, so we'll try and get this in. There's not much places to hold for the mast to be honest. Yeah, it went in a bit too easy. Just have to watch it and damage anything holding this thing. And then we've got the other mast hole just in there. This one's a wee bit stiffer. But okay, so that's that in. Okay, so that's the men. Like I say, I'm not going to fix them just yet. But they certainly add something considerable to the ship itself overall. It really adds to it. Okay, so the reason I'm not going to permanently fix them now is Jim mentioned in one of his posts that all the rigging, particularly the stays down to the decks and the anchor points, is a lot easier if they're pre rigged. And on this front one, we've got the signal lanyards as well. So I'm going to leave them off and I'm investigating some options. And here's a bit of a sneak preview. So these are 3D printed chapels. And they've came up not too bad. I've been experimenting with different layers. And these ones are slightly smaller. And they've got the holes. The holes are formed so I can get the pins in. Brass wire. I'm investigating this. I did some turn buckles as well, but the slicing program detected some errors in the model, so it wouldn't let me slice it. So I'll have to redraw the turn buckles. But these are different. These are slightly different in size and different layer heights. So I've been testing. So once I can get this sorted out, then we'll fix the masts in.